Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartia and welcome to another episode of T3M or topic of this month and the topic of this month is security and compliance and today we have with us Linda Brown, Director of Risk and Compliance at Small Step. Linda, it's great to have you on the show. Great, thanks for having me. I would love to hear from you how you have seen the evolution of security because if you look at the traditional IT, security used to be someone else's problem. It was not developer's problem. They are separate silos. But ever since we started moving to containerized cloud native Kubernetes centric world, we talk about things like DevSecOps, we talk about zero trust, uh, we talk about shift left. So uh, the security landscape is also changing and evolving. So just can you talk about the evolution of security? Yeah, it's funny. I think uh, it's evolved in a lot of ways. Uh, I think one of the big ways is just the ending of the concept that security is all about the perimeter. Um, you know, I think that's what zero trust is all about, right, is the the fact that perimeter security is no longer enough to make sure that organizations are secure. And as companies move to cloud environments and multi-cloud environments, I've actually recently seen companies that were staunch resistors of cloud environments that just refused to even consider the cloud as an option, they're now moving to the cloud and they're really having to rethink uh, how they do security. And if you take out the perimeter and make the assumption that your human controls can fail, you know, we've seen all these um, uh, phishing attempts and, you know, it's users. It's all about the users still, right? And if that fails, if that human control fails, what do you have in place next to make sure that your data and everything is secure? And I think that has pushed everything further down the stack, which relates to the shift left movement, which relates to how we secure the Kubernetes pods and the databases and the backend communications. If all the things are everywhere. <laughs> How do you control them, uh, uh, the security of them? How do you make sure that the inner object communications are secure? Um, making sure mutual TLS is there, getting certificates everywhere. And how do you do it at scale? Uh, you know, I think when you, when in the past we thought about certificates, because obviously they're not new technology, uh, there was a lot of manual labor involved and somebody would call somebody and we need a new certificate and ops would take care of it. Uh, if we're going to move and have zero trust where those certificates really have to be everywhere, we need a corresponding scalable environment where we know we can just get certificates reliably. And I really love uh, the change to, and, and this is a big thing for small step, the change to short-lived certificates. I, I don't think it helps anyone to have one and three and five and 10 year certificates when you're talking about every database and ever, every Kubernetes pod that spins up and even people. 24-hour certificates, but how do you meet that demand with a centralized platform that's scalable and also has auditing and logging? You know, it just really changes the perspective um, of how we think about things. And that's zero trust too, right? Moving past the concept of perimeter security. There are so many different, like a few uh, weeks ago, uh, there was a report where Booking.com, they were using OAuth and they have an API vulnerability. So everything else was compromised. Uh, of course, social engineering happens a lot, uh, which was Uber. Uh, so, and these are tech companies. These are not even you know, mom and pop shops who have nothing to do with technologies. And even at KubeCon, we see Home Depot there. I still have a Home Depot mug. So all these companies, <laughs> hardcore hardware companies, they are doing it. But the thing is that, uh, the security, the the attack, you know, vector or you know whatever you you call it, they're also evolving. There are so many variables now that security, as you also said, is no longer that it's it never was, but it's not a product anymore. It's a process which is not just about technologies. It's about culture and people. If I ask you, when you also talk about these customers who were like reluctant to move to the cloud, and you know, cloud itself is very complicated, and when you start talking security, things get even more complicated. 
If I ask you, what are your major concerns that you feel, hey, companies are not doing the right thing, or you feel that, hey, yes, they are taking security seriously? Because I was talking to Afghan, I was talking to somebody uh, yesterday also for the topic, and he, all, he said that the best thing that security companies have done in the last five years is to tell us how miserably they failed. You know, <laughs> and we are talking about all the traditional, you know, security companies or other companies. So my question to you is, what are the major security concerns that you? see that are there if companies don't make it a priority? I think part of the part of the problems I've seen um, is still that that shift as people move to cloud and companies move to cloud. I still think there's a predisposition and it just comes from habits of securing the perimeter of all those clouds. <laughs> so I think that there's a, a fundamental mind shift that has to happen um, and to break those habits. Uh, I think part of that is, you know, shifting how we test. You know, when you think about just, you know, the way we've done um, vulnerability scanning, the way we've done pen testing, um, all of the, the things that we use to measure how we were doing with security uh, has been about the perimeter. And I think that all has to shift to be, um, are we protecting all the things in all the places we are um, if we assume it's inevitable that someone is going to get to our infrastructure how do we secure it? How do we make sure that each thing is considered the house and we worry about the open doors and windows and it's full stack, uh, which means we have to push into every piece of what developers build. I think there was a tendency for only certain developers um, that were building certain types of components to be concerned about security, uh, but now it's everybody. Um, and I think from a corporate standpoint, I personally feel that shifting a culture to, to think more about security, I, mean, I, think, I think culture change is hard, right? I, I always uh, compare it to turning a cruise ship. So, you know, you're moving and trying to get everybody to think in this new way. And there's bottom up things that can happen to help that. I think Small step is um, especially good at helping people take a single use case and start with that and make it secure and build that security from the ground up. But I think we also need, in order to make sure that security moves to all areas of an organization, I really believe there has to be a top down will to make security a priority. And that is what allows for budgets to free up. That's what allows for uh, certain business managers to not get away with saying, oh, I can't do security the right way right now because of money limitations or technology limitations. Um, you know, there has to be... Um, there has to be the will to say, we cannot operate this way. You and your business line must make changes. Uh, and that's across the entire organization. So I think the, the top and the bottom meet somewhere in the middle. Uh, but there are, there are plenty of changes to still be made. <laughs> We are thinking that you know security is kind of a solved problem when when I listen to you and we're like, hey, everybody has totally understood that digital, digitization, cloud native, that is the approach. But you know, it looks like that is still a, a major uh, challenge there. Can you talk about what is, is stopping or what are the roadblocks or hurdles where, uh, because when we do talk about a lot of, I mean, also I'm in the field where I do see the technology they are building for tomorrow. So I think, hey, that's already a solved problem, but you deal with the actual customers. So what do you think are the roadblocks which are kind of, these companies are hesitant to, uh, you know, adopting some of these practices? I think as with every new thing that comes into security, there's a pattern and a path that things take. I think as we thought about and, and moved through the evolution of how do we secure users, we came to a place where there were these 
great umbrella technologies that helped us manage users and user access, um, you know, the IDPs of the worlds, you know, I think it's a very mature part of what we do. I think what has to happen across the industry is there has to be a maturing of products uh, around zero trust. And I think we're really just getting started. It's, you know, I feel like we've been talking about zero trust for a while now as security practitioners, but the businesses are just starting to move from single zero trust use cases, pieces part zero trust, to really understanding that it is an entire change in perspective and methodology. And I don't think the tools have quite caught up. Um, I think, uh, you know, and, and Small Step is thinking the same way, right? How do we uh, provide an umbrella solution that is the way companies secure all that other stuff that's not people? We've done a good job, I think, with people, but not all that other stuff. Uh, and so I think that's what's needed is that evolution in the industry. And it's it started right with you know how we do EDS and endpoint solutions. And um, it's all kind of there. But how you know, how do we create that picture that allows security practitioners to uh, audit what's going on, to log what's happening, to report on where they stand, uh, because the reporting is a big piece of this as you go up the chain and ask for money and talk to the higher ups. Uh, they're looking for those red, amber, green indicators of what's working and what isn't. And so having that centralized reporting, having those umbrella technologies uh, that bring that picture into focus, I think is still developing in the zero trust market and uh, small steps thinking the same way, right? How do we take uh, the, what we're, what good things we're doing around getting certificates to anything, anywhere, all the time and auto renewing and at scale, uh, how do we present that information to uh, security practitioners and risk teams uh, so that they can make decisions about what they do next based on how they're seeing the progress going in, in zero trust implementations? There are already a scarcity of you know security folks. As much as we like to move everything into DevOps and SREs and zero trust, uh, but uh, as long as as much as we want to break those silos, but there are folks, you know, like you who specialize in security. So there will ex al always be soft silos like that. There are folks who specialize in security will be there. So talk about the role that a small step is playing in helping companies lower the barrier of entry so they can, with a top down approach, bottom approach, they can embrace some of these security practices. It's funny, we've uh, started to really use the the name of the company as a, a notion about where you get started. Take a small step uh, into this realm. And the way we have the company set up and priced, we make it easy for companies to take one use case, get started with it, do it in a way that because we're a SaaS offering, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time building up a PKI environment. PKI is complicated. <laughs> I've learned that even more after joining Small Step. I've been a security practitioner for years. I have my CISSP and I got here and I thought, wow, you know, PKI is just a whole nother level of complexity. And Here's this product that really makes it practical and approachable so that you can take that single use case, get started, and then add on to it. Um, it's not, uh, you know, while we want to make sure that we're providing uh, a picture of what's happening, auditing, logging um, for visibility you know across a broader audience to get started it's a small thing it's just one use case and you can add on to it and the pki infrastructure the deliverability of those certificates reliably 
with short lifespans is all taken care of for you. High availability, the whole thing. I think that's the, that's the beauty of what we've done with small step, all with that open source core of PKI at the base. And so I think, um, I think that's what we offer for companies. What advice do you have for companies who are still, you know, kind of uh, still looking at improve, um, they're still like, hey, should be or should be not. But let's just keep those kind of companies, the company who are looking at embracing some of these practices. What advice do you have so that they, they can take small steps to I- I embrace and adopt a security practice, build a security culture there? I think taking um, the the things you're good at already that you have down where you have set processes and procedures and applying certificates to them is a great place to get started. I think companies have gotten, or many companies have gotten really good with how they distribute um, containerized solutions. You know, Kubernetes is a great example. They've built up that expertise. Uh, it's a great way in, with an established process where you can just insert certificates. And, uh, you know, Small Step makes that really easy. Um, I also love, um, you know, it's a, a very uh, rude and core functionality. It's not about X509 certificates, but I love our SSH solution. I think it's a no brainer. Every company uses SSH. It's a foundational level of access. Uh, you know, and I see a lot of companies still using shared credentials. <laughs> well, you take a, a product like Small Step, and, and I was a user before I joined the company. Uh, and I loved it. Um, I would authenticate to my IDS. Um, we used uh, Oct at the time. Um, so I would authenticate in the browser and I could then SSH anywhere I needed to go in the organization um, with that one login once a day. Uh, it made my job much easier. Um, I didn't complain about the security because it didn't make my life harder. I didn't even care that it made the DevOps guy's job easier on the back end. I just wanted to be able to do my job easier. Um, and even if I was accessing a shared credential technically on the back end, I was still logging in with my individual ID. So the logging and auditing is is available and visible now where before you had no visibility into who might have used that shared account. So even if you're using it for break glass or whatever, you know, don't change the users that you have on all those servers. Overlay a solution like Small Step, make everybody's lives easier from DevOps to the end users, and you've secured uh, what is a foundational level of access uh, that every organization uses. So I think that's one really simple way. And then again, like I said, anywhere you already have um, set processes in place, just insert a certificate into that uh, secure environment. Linda, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic and also share some of the insights how companies can embrace security practices. Thanks for your those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. I hope we get to speak again. 